So I'm Don Kerrigan. I'm the CEO of the US business for Nestle Health Science. And I joined Nestle Health Science from the Bountiful Company, where I was the president of North America. Um, so I spent uh, three or four years with the Bountiful Company, and then prior to that, spent a, most of my career in the consumer healthcare space at Pfizer Consumer and Bear Consumer. So I'm excited to be here today to talk with you about the, cons the consumer care portion of our business and give you a view as to both the opportunities and the prospects that we see for the future. So as Greg mentioned, these are very attractive categories. They're very large in scale. Uh, VMS is 140 billion, and uh, active nutrition is uh, nearly 30 billion. And both have been experiencing very robust growth, which we also expect to continue in the future. The underlying trends that are driving that are that they're incredibly consumer driven. They, it is a fragmented market, which creates opportunity for consolidation and scale. Um, innovation matters to the consumer here, and I'll come on to in a minute, brands really matter to the consumer here. Um, and there's a holistic um, consumer trend towards wellness and self-care that is really motivating consumers to participate in this category. And that's only been strengthened with COVID. The category, as I said before, is very brand-centric. If you look at the performance of the category over the last several years, brand performance, brands have outstripped private label quite considerably in terms of uh, market performance. Part of the reason for that is that the consumer leverages brand as one of the core reasons that they choose a product within the category. And they look for the brand that they know that they can trust, that delivers quality, and that delivers science and uh, technology. And we see that as a significant opportunity that we can continue to bring into the market. As I said just previously, COVID only strengthened this category. We have seen increased usage rates, so the volume of which the consumer uses the category has increased quite dramatically. We've seen increased numbers of households and people participating in the category, as reflected there. VMS saw in the US alone five, over 5 million new households coming in, and active nutrition has seen even more during this period. And frankly, we've seen increased penetration um, over the last several years in this category that is unheard of to grow that level of penetration in such a short period of time. Nearly uh, six points on active nutrition and three points on a very well penetrated category of supplements. The underlying motivation in consumers today is, is only as strong as they continue to look for ways that they can take more control of their health and do more for themselves, even amidst some of the challenges of the global recession. During this period, we've also, oops, my mistake, we've also, as Greg mentioned, outperformed the category. You've seen very strong uh, growth performance by Nestle Health Science and our brands, and um, that's continued through the COVID period and into this post-COVID period that we're experiencing now. And while we are cycling some very significant volumes from COVID, um, Omicron, Delta spikes, uh, we are still uh, in a category that is exponentially larger than it was pre-COVID, and the volumes that are in this category today are much larger than they have ever been. Nestle Health Science is kind of uniquely positioned within this segment. We are um, the leading uh, global consumer care um, company focused on nutrition. And what really differentiates us is that we are solely focused on nutrition. If you look at the other companies that are uh, represented on this slide, many of them are, have leading brands and positions within nutrition, but they also play in oral care or OTC medicines or other segments that differentiates them from us and that their focus is distributed across those different categories. I like to say that in the US, but certainly on a global basis, in the US we have 6,000 colleagues and associates that wake up every day thinking about nutrition and advancing nutrition for consumers and patients in the US. And that really is our sole focus as a business. Our brands are distributed across um, all aspects of how the consumer shops. So if they're premium down to value, we have offerings within the Nestle Health Science portfolio. And if they're self-selected or they're leveraging an HCP or an influencer to help guide them in their selection, then we're well penetrated in all of those channels. So 
In the U.S. and around the world, wherever the consumer or patient is interacting with nutrition, Nestle Health Science is in a leading position. We, we have driven substantial growth, as you just saw, and we continue to drive not only growth but value in this category um, by adding increased innovation or technologies that deliver increased opportunity for the consumer to invest more and get more value out of the category. There's two examples that are there. Uh, the first is a product called Sleep3, which we will talk a little bit more about, but it's an improvement over base melatonin, and as a result of that, commands almost a two-time premium in terms of the average price per pill for the consumer um, to get the increased benefits that come with Sleep3. And as Greg mentioned, and I think you'll find both in the back of the room and in your gift bags, you'll have the opportunity to sample Sleep3 yourself and decide whether or not it delivers on the promise that, um, that we make with this brand. Um, we've done the same thing with Orgain as it has come in. Um, we've not only continued to drive growth on the base powder business, which is an incredibly strong and well-performing business today, but we're adding a complete meal product into the market as we speak, which has a much higher uh, ring for the consumer, but they also get significant increased benefit from that product. Excuse me. The U.S. market, as Greg said, is the largest part of our total business. Uh, right now, um, we've seen strong growth, and I'll walk across the slide just to ground us, but the VMS category growing at almost 8%. We have a, a, a leading share at 14% within the market. Obviously, we've continued to take share, and we have the great privilege of having brands that are in leading positions across all aspects of the market. That includes Garden of Life, that includes Nature's Bounty, et cetera. So, we're really well positioned with those brands in the U.S., not only to continue to drive growth, but to expand those brands outside of the U.S. Adult nutrition with Boost. Boost, Boost commands a number two position within the U.S. market, but has taken significant share over the last year and continues to be a growth driver within that adult nutrition healthy aging segment. As I mentioned, Orgain joined our family earlier this year and has been a significant addition in the plant-based protein segment, driving meaningful growth, meaningful share, and really one of the preeminent brands in the plant-based arena of protein. And then, of course, Vital Proteins, which we'll share a little bit more on here shortly, but largely has created the collagen market and commands better than a 50 share, still growing share, still driving growth in the market. So we have this great privilege of amazing brands within the U.S. business that continue to present opportunities for continued growth, but we also know that there's significant growth opportunity as we boost the core to bring these brands into other markets. When we look at the U.S. market versus the rest of the world, we see that the per capita spending in the U.S. is much higher. So the consumer is spending exponentially more on nutritional supplements within consumer care, but there are significant value in the markets around the world, particularly in some of the ones that are referenced there, and there's greater opportunity for penetration of these categories into those markets. We see the same trends in terms of global health and wellness. We see the opportunity to capitalize on the market potential that exists and further develop those markets in the future, and we can leverage our science and innovation to be a leader in those markets as we are in the U.S. So our ambition with the U.S., uh, sorry, with the brands is to drive significant growth, and you'll see that um, my uh, colleague in, uh, that runs the international business is, is uh, positioned to deliver over a billion dollars of um, revenue from the international business through the expansion of these global brands throughout uh, the rest of the world. And we'll do that in a prioritized and focused way, which I'll share in just a moment, but really leveraging both the expertise, the knowledge, the collateral materials, the content that we have developed and use in the U.S. market and adapt it appropriately for the ex-U.S. markets. And so this gives you a view for how we'll look to prioritize that. There are clearly some must-win markets, places where there's significant a revenue opportunity where there's per capita spending um, that we can capitalize. Greater China, Japan, and South Korea are the notable um, countries um, referenced there. But we also have market positions today that we can build on where we're penetrated, but perhaps not as deeply penetrated as we would like. And you'll see us focus on Canada, UK, Brazil, and the rest of Oceania as well. 
And then we'll selectively invest to develop into other markets that have meaningful opportunity that can drive growth for us as a business. So one of the brands that's referenced there is Vital Proteins, and we've begun the journey of rolling Vital Proteins into the market. But before I talk about the success and the approach for Vital Proteins, why don't I let you see a little bit about who Vital Proteins is uh, through the video that I'll run right now. Vital Proteins has been making moves. Many of our brands have actually, and we have about four brands in the portfolio today that are on the verge or in the path to become the next billionaire brands within the portfolio. Uh, Vital certainly thinks that they're gonna be the first one there, although Nature's Bounty, Garden of Life, and Orgain are all gonna fight to be in that position as well. Um, but Vital Proteins is off to a great start because in the first year of the acquisition under Nestle's ownership, the business doubled, so we grew um, from 225 million to 450 million in 2021 alone. And that was done through leveraging, as you saw, the incredible marketing efforts and development work that's done to help build this collagen segment within the US. And we know that that has resonance that can be built and leveraged outside of the US. That starts with capitalizing on the globally recognized partner that we have with Jennifer Aniston. She is an ambassador for the brand. She's been a longtime Vital Proteins user, and she's passionately committed towards developing not only the brand, but the collagen segment with us. We will localize the campaigns and the materials to better reflect or reflect the needs of the individual markets, but we'll obviously capitalize on the materials that we have coming out of US and, and Jen's involvement. And then we'll obviously continue to build on the infrastructure that we have in the markets to, to bring vital proteins, as well as all the brands, into the selected markets that make sense for uh, the respective brands in the portfolio. I mentioned before, and Greg referenced, that we spent a lot of time figuring out how we leverage insights to deliver greater value into the market. And I referenced to you before that you'll have the opportunity to use Sleep 3, hopefully tonight or, or at some point here. Um, in the sleep category, there's been a real need. There's, there's lots of products in the market that help you get to sleep. There's not that many products in the market that help you stay asleep through the night. And if you're like me, and many people probably suffer as I do with waking up in the middle of the night and then it's more difficult to get back to sleep than it was to even fall asleep in the first place. We created this product which is, um, first it has a layer of herbal blends that kind of calm you down, get the mind to stop racing a little bit. Uh, an immediate release of melatonin that kind of helps kick you into falling asleep, and then an extended release melatonin that through technology delivers a constant stream of melatonin throughout the night so that you can stay asleep. We've done clinical trials to support the product, and we've seen that we've been able to maintain blood levels of melatonin at a level that maintains that sleep performance throughout the night. So an exceptionally um, well-crafted great product. I use it myself. I'd, I'd encourage all of you to try it. Um, and it's had a huge amount of commercial success. So um, a great way that we've tried to focus on what was the consumer need, how do we deliver it through technology and differentiate the product, as you saw before, with premium pricing 
to deliver something that's very substantial right now within the portfolio. Orgain Kids has done the same. Um, you know, they can see the need with consumers, with moms that want low sugar, convenient options for good nutritional uh, gap filling. And they created a product that is 40% less sugar, has an upgraded um, uh, grass-fed protein, uh, supported by its uh, organic and non-GMO positioning. And this product has already become the number one selling kids RTD on Amazon and is outpacing and a very entrenched competitor within the RTD space of uh, kids' nutrition within the U.S. So, again, focusing on the insight of what the consumer is looking for and delivering that through either technology or a better quality product is a continued way for us to bring differentiation to this category. In the spirit of unlocking potential uh, with portfolio management, um, the Bountiful acquisition was uh, a transformational event within Nestle Health Science. It brought capabilities that frankly didn't exist or weren't fully developed within uh, Nestle Health Science, notably manufacturing, but others as well, and Greg referenced sales and other commercial uh, expertise that existed within the Bountiful organization in addition to the brands. And that has really allowed us to take an even stronger leadership position in the market, certainly in the U.S., but even on a global basis. Um, that means, and we're deep now in scaling the portfolio into other segments, so taking formulations that exist within Garden of Life or pure encapsulation or ex the existing bountiful portfolio and leveraging them into other brands within the business. We have become the undisputed uh, nutritional lead within the U.S. retail environment. And retailers, this is a category, these categories are very important to retailers today. And they're looking for somebody that's more consolidated to help them guide and direct where they're going to go with the wellness solutions in their stores. And then that leverage as the leader allows us to increase the productivity of our marketing investment as well as our trade investment and use more of our brands within a portfolio to bring solutions, not only to the retailers, but to consumers. As Greg also mentioned, we're working hard to expand our margins through the efficiencies and synergies that can come from the scaled organization that we now have. We have a manufacturing organization that has leading position in pretty much every format that the consumer looks to for nutritional solutions. We have a supply chain that we continue to optimize and leverage our increased size and scale for raw ingredient um, sourcing benefit, as well as just the efficiency that we can get from insourcing. And we've started to, be, to consolidate our SG&A and our um, marketing and merchandising functions such that we can capitalize on the scale of this very large business that we've created. And the benefits of that have already started to be realized. We've seen a significant improvement in our ability to deliver to customers, our ability to bring formats to market across gummies, powders, liquids, solid dose, where we have scale and we have leadership. And we have an organization that really is in a position to capitalize on a very substantial scaled nutrition business within the U.S. and on a global basis.